Right. Appreciate y'all coming in tonight. We're going to get into ancient Ethiopia and the origin. All right. And the origin of Gnosticism. All right. Um, we know the so-called origin of Christianity somewhat, but real Gnosticism is ancient Ethiopian information. Kushite. All right. Information. So we're going to get into that information tonight. So just hold on. You know how we do. We got to go to the presentation that y'all check out what's going on where y'all can see everything is everything all right so let's get to it all right we got to do the so-called warning you know what i'm saying it says federal law allows citizens to produce reproduce distribute and exhibit all right um portions of copywritten motion pictures, videotapes, all video discs under certain circumstances without authorization of the copyright holder, right? And it says, this infringement of copyright is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news, reporting, teaching, and parody. All right, so you know what we do here, we teach. Of course, sometimes we get silly with this shit, but hey, but anyway, let's look at it. Dr. Albert Churchward in his book is one of his most famous books, The Origin and Evolution of Religion. He held that the ancient African pygmies and the Nubians, the Ethiopians, Kushites, were the real originators of religion. <laughs> All right. The late Count. Um, C.F. Varney, in his book, The Ruins of Empires, he writes, all religions originated in Africa. The Ethiopians conceived themselves, said Theodorus, a Greek historian, to be of greater iniquity than any other nation. They supposed themselves also to be the inventors of divine worship, of festivals, of solemn assembly, of sacrifices and every other religious practice. The late Dr. Brest, famous Egyptian or Egyptologist, I should say, maintained that the Ethiopians were the first to give religious thought and aspiration to the world. All right, so these historians all state this was before Egypt, before Kemet. All right. Now, not to state that Egypt is not the most famous and most known for these teachings, because they are. There's no doubt about that, as the handwriting is still on the walls today. However, um, Herodotus states that Egypt was also a colony of Ethiopia, in which that got permission to drudge the now in which that that became the land in which that they inhabited. All right. So let's look at Gnosticism and early Christianity. Gnosticism is a philosophy or philosophical and religious movement which started in pre-Christian times. Before the Christians. But remember, Christians become Christians until Antioch. And that actually is where we get the word Cretan. All right? If you don't know what Cretan means, look it up in the dictionary. It had its source in the Jewish community of Alexandria. Right? Now, let's, let's, let's get this right. It is not the Jewish, as in the Jewish people that we know today. It is actually the black Jews who are the Hebrews or Israelites. All right, as we refer to them nowadays. That was in the community of Alexandria and been later picked up by some Christian groups in Judea or Judea and Galilee. The names derived from the Greek word Gnostic, which literally means knowledge, 
insight, and enlightenment. The Syrian Egyptian school of Gnosticism, right? Manesianism and Mandeanism means knowledge of life. Now remember these two groups of Gnosticism, you will see something very important because it's still in your Bible today. Central Gnostic belief that different from Orthodox Christian teachings include the creator as a lower being, uh-oh, the creator as a lower being. When we know who that is, that's Adolabroth, who is known as Yahweh, Jah, Yah, Jehovah. Okay? So when Jay-Z called himself Hova, you know, which is the same word as Hawa, is talking about the elements in which that forms life into existence. Right? Or this lower being. Which isn't necessarily anything wrong with this. That's how you got here into the physical world. We call it sex. S-E-X or S-I-X, where the S-E-X comes from. Six. We're just talking about the formation of the physical man as he has six points. Like a six-pointed star configuration. And from the male is what and who determines is the, the, the masculine and feminine or male and female being. All right? Demiurge. The lower being called Demiurge means public craftsman. Public craftsman. Right? And not a supreme deity. The belief that all matter is evil and the body is in a prism or a prison. Prism, you get it? Prison to be escaped from. Versus the Nicene Creed teaching that there would be a physical resurrection of all people. The belief that the material world created by the Demiurge, this is, as you will see, the different Gnostic schools sometimes identify the Demiurge as Aramin, El, uh oh. So the Gnostics believe that L was a lower deity. Sacklis, Samuel, Satan, Yadolabroth, or Yahweh. This lower God is sometimes called Adolabroth or Idolabroth or Jalabroth from Aramaic word meaning begatter of the heavens. The begatter of heavens. So when we talk about the heavens, we talk about the seven heavens. The Quran speak, speaks of the seven heavens. These are merely the seven atmospheres in which that surrounds the planet Earth or correlates to the planet Earth. All right, you have the stratosphere, you have the magnetosphere, the mesosphere, the ionosphere, so forth and so on. These are the various spheres. These are the various heavens. This is Jehovah, the God of the Hebrew Scriptures, Old Testament. This is why those who claim to be the Jewish people now, or as Revelation, the second chapter, the ninth verse, Revelation, the third chapter, the ninth verse states, there are those who say they are Jews, but are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. He is portrayed as the creator of the earth and its life forms. He is viewed by Gnostics as fundamentally evil, jealous, rigid, lacking in compassion, and prone to genocide. The Demiurge thinks that he is supreme. Now understand that this is all talking about your lower self, your lower nature. Lust, greed, jealousy, and envy. 
His pride and incompetence has resulted in the sorry state of the world as we know it, and in the blind and ignorant conditions of most of mankind. Gnosticism seen Jesus as a spirit that seemed to be human, leading to a rejection of the incarnation, which is the deadicism. Christ was pure spirit and only had a phantom body. So Gnostics seen Jesus as a spirit that seemed to have a body. Christ was pure spirit and only had a phantom body. Do you understand what they're saying? Most don't. What they really mean is that it's talking about the breath. Because Jesus is Shu with the personification of air, which holds in your physical body together. It's called sympathical and centrifugal force, the yin and yang, referred to as insulation and exhalation, the breath. So Jesus, whose name in Aramaic is Yahushua, and in Hebrew is Yahshua, in English it is translated transliterated as Joshua, all right? So it's talking about the breath. The Gnostics believe this. So I'm the only one teaching this information that Jesus do exist, but not as no cracker, not as no so-called just black man, but as a spirit. Because remember, the word spirit, when you look it up, is synonymous with breath. And when you look up breath, it's synonymous with spirit. One and the same. So Jesus as a spirit, talking about Jesus as breath, that seemed to be human, right? Because the breath, in order for me to see that you are living, you must breathe. Have a physical body leading to the, to the rejection of incarnation, of the incarnation as one. This is what this means. They, re, they, they rejected the incarnation of just one person who had or were endowed with the spirit, Jesus, or Christ, who was pure spirit and only had a phantom body. The phantom body is talking about your auric fill that is emitted from the physical body based on your breath. You can make it range from three feet to more than 15 feet outside of you. Your auric can expand based on your breathing techniques. Some Gnostics believe that Christ's resurrection occurred at or before Jesus' death on the cross. Well, we hope that it does. So before you physically die and your body symbolizes that cross because when the soul comes into the physical body what happens is, is that you will see like a cross at the top of your head and that becomes the soft spot area in your head for at least seven years before it becomes hard and your grandma tell you sit your little hard-headed ass down somewhere I know that's what my grandma told me. <laughs> so you come in the cross. At the cross where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rode away, rode away. Oh, you remember that shit. Don't act like it's been a long time. I mean, you just got out the church yesterday. Some Gnostics believe that Christ's resurrection occurred at or before Jesus' death on the cross. You will want to raise Kundalini, which symbolizes the resurrection, in your body before the physical death and the soul leaving out through the top of the head, hence the cross. This is why Jesus was crucified on the Mount Golgotha, 
Mount Calvary called Golgotha in Aramaic. Golgotha in Aramaic means the place of the skull. So see, people can keep trying to reject this information over and over again, whatever the case is. But this shit is indisputable. And I got to teach you the real science of what's going on. Not this spooky shit outside of yourself, like most of you believe. Holy Quran, fourth chapter, 156 Ayat, 100 through 159 Ayat, that they rejected faith and that they uttered against Mary a grave false charge that they said in boast, we killed Jesus Christ, the son of Mary, the message of Allah. But they killed him not, nor crucified him, but so that it was made to appear to them and those who differed therein are full of doubts with no certain knowledge, but only conjecture to follow for of a certainty they killed him not so you can't kill the breath you can't kill jesus freaking retards you looking you thought about a man from two from two thousand years ago an albion pale skin man from two thousand years ago looking feminized come on turn the other cheek Hit me on that one too, master. This is all your conjecture based off of what you read and studied, but you didn't take it into a metaphysical, esoteric, occultic state. Therefore you suffer and my people die for a lack of knowledge. How you gonna kill Christ Jesus? The son of Mary, which means illusion, <laughs> mirage. Mary is the same word as mirage, which means seed of illusion. It's an illusion. You're dealing with craftsmen, magi magis, magicians, the messenger of Allah. In order for you to even be able to become a messenger, hence Messiah, you must have the breath of life and resurrect yourself and resurrect yourself before you check yourself. by the time you check yourself you better before you get wrecked or you get wrecked you better check yourself before you wreck yourself and the only way you can do that is by resurrect yourself all right resurrect yourself mary realizes the kundalini energy she's raising christ jesus up which is that seed, Adam, that is produced in the brain in which that get lodged within the solar plexus in the manger and must be resurrected. That's what this is talking about. So how can you kill a thing in which that happens internally? Of course you can nowadays with GMO food. Bacteria spores coming from the sky, chemtrails, aluminum, barium, forgetful agencies, um, agencies, fluoride in the water, forgetful agent, tap water specifically, even bottled water by Nestle and others. This is how they poisoning us. Nay, Allah raised him up unto himself, and Allah is exalted in power, wise. And there is none of the people of the book, Jews or Christians, but must believe in him, Jesus, before his death. And on the day of judgment, he, Jesus, will be a witness against them. How can Jesus be a witness against them? See, you thinking of that you're going to see the pearly white gates with this pearly uh, 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 Albion, European, pale skin, feminized man waiting for you to come. But that's what the pictures reveal to you. Here I, here I am at five and, 
And I'm on Master of Sesame Street at five years old. And the song was one of these things just doesn't belong here. One of these things just doesn't belong. I'm looking at a so-called black congregation, black ushers, black missionary boy, black deacon boy, black choir, black minister, pastor, white Jesus. <gasps> One of these things just doesn't belong. One of these things just doesn't belong. There's long here. This is talking about the breath. The day of judgment is talking about the day in which that you physically die. And your breath will be the witness against them or against you, rather. This is shown to you on the ancient Egyptian scales. The heart would be weighed against the feather. The feather is actually talking about the breath. That's the feather of Shu, S-H-U, Jesus. And if the heart is lighter than the feather, lighter than the breath, because the breath is what gives you your experiences. So if you don't have all this guilt, rejection, dis disappointment, depression, hatred, stored up in you, the heart will be lighter than the feather and you won't have to incarnate again. See, this is why it leads to a rejection of the incarnation. In other words, they don't want to incarnate again. So their whole purpose as Gnostics was to make sure that their heart was lighter than the feather. Same thing is taught in Buddhism. Nam yo ho renge ki yo, 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 nam yo ho renge ki yo. Same thing is taught in Hinduism. Oh mari padmi ham, oh mari padmi ham, oh mari padmi ham, oh mari padmi ham. Same thing was taught in the ancient Kemetic. No poo, no, no poo, no, no poo, no. We understood. Now we don't have a goddamn clue. Theological scholars, such as James Leggy. LLD at Oxford University, Professor Double M Jennings, William Jennings could be PhD, and Honorable Clement Allen all agree that hundreds, if not thousands, of ancient manuscripts, tablets, carvings, indisputably or indubitably proves that all races of people that have ever inhabited the earth have strived or striving at the best they could to leave records of the chemistry and physiology of their own bodies. Hmm. Science, Egyptology, Indo-Iranian, Chinese, Japanese, Persian, or Sanskrit, all forever strove to solve the riddle of the human body. To drive the point home, these wonderful holy books are fables, parables, allegories, dealing the chemical, physiology, anatomy, anatomical, and astrological operations of the human body you don't believe it read god man the word made flesh by george w perry and inez e carey the problem is that an uninitiated unlooked person unlearned person may read a passage and give it his own interpretation but the interpretation may not be correct or as in depth as needed Therefore, 
denomination, sex, cult, schisms, and isms may be formed around their interpretation. A cognitive meaning tending to bring a memory, mood, or image, for example, subtly or indirectly to mind, but not necessarily the denotive. Denotative um, de meaning having the power of explicitly denoting or designating or naming. So, what you've been taught in whether you're Baptist, Methodist, Jehovah Witness, Seven day Adventist, Episcopalian, Angelican, Mormon, etc., etc. You've been taught the, cog the cognitive meaning, the cognitive meanings. You have not been taught the de um, de um, denotative meaning. You have not been taught, to, um, taught that. This is definitely one I can agree with Pastor Ray Hankins on. He states, all spiritual belief systems, religions are based on the life, deeds, and events of Eponymous. You might want to know what eponymous means. Well, we're going to get to it. People that have been culturally literalized, anthropomorphized, and incorporated into the cognitive reality of the people within that culture. All right. An eponymy is a fictional character or fictitious character. Who a person or a group of people name or characterize themselves after for the sake of giving validity, such as the Moors. The Moors talk about Ruth and they talk about uh, Jesus and all these different things and believe them to be actual people that existed. But these are fictitious characters. They didn't exist. But many more are coming in with that same Christian mentality. Their quote unquote grand sheiks, supreme grand sheiks, national grand sheiks, ain't teaching them shit. Except how to damn sing songs and tell them that Jesus means justice. They, they're not even getting this information that I'm telling you right now in their depth chamber. They're not. Not with this explanation. Not as clear as I'm giving it to you. And that's the problem. And this is why all this bickering between these various groups, the Moors, the Hebrew Israelites, or Hebrews, Israelites, uh, Christians, Muslims, Muslims, whatever. I'm all of it and more, M-O-O-R, more. You get it? That's the only way in which that I overstand this. Everything else is for not, null and void. Because Abraham did not exist. Hence, Abraham could not be the father of Christianity, Islam, or Judaism didn't exist. And it says so in your own Bible. That's the crazy shit. Fictitious characters. Who a person or group name or characterize them. That's why you talk about be Canaanites. No damn Canaanite. All right. I, think I gave you before the science of the metaphysical meaning behind Canaanite, Lot, sex and his daughters and shit, Moab. The stories are fucked up. Canaan was cursed. Well, why the hell fuck why be a Canaanite? Historically, we talking about what? Phoenicians. And who are the Phoenicians? It was from the line of the ancient Egyptians. In fact, the Phoenicians also will be fine 
Hebrew stemming from? The language that is. Not the people. Because once again, Abraham didn't exist. In fact, the name Abraham is an ancient Egyptian word. Ancient Timurian to commit word. Ab means heart, which becomes father. Ra, of course, means light, sun. Ham, cam means dark, complected, melanin. Carbon. So, once again, in eponymy is a fictitious character who a person or a group of people name or characterize themselves after for the sake of giving validity. I don't have to have validity as a more to believe in a fictitious story. I am that which that I am. I am the holy breath. I am the higher self. I am the revealer of light. So please, even more for the sake of giving validity, that's all you have is for the sake of giving validity. We don't need it and can identify to their own existence. I don't need fictitious stories to identify that I am that I am. Asher, Ia, Asher, Ia. I am that which that I am. Nu, Pu, Nu. I am that which that I am. For example, eponymous such as Adam, Noah, Ham, Shem, Japheth, Abraham, Hence Hebrews, Jacob, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, even Osiris, Horus. So we're talking about Osar, Heru, Krishna, Buddha, right? Prometheus, Prometheus, Adon, Quasicoto, Mithra, Zoroaster and others are used by some to claim their place as God's chosen people to give themselves validity. Sorry. There's stories. Now, you don't believe me? Let's go to the Bible. Since many of y'all go by the Bible, well, hopefully you didn't go by this verse. Holy Bible, New Testament, Galatians 4, 21, 46, I mean, 26, it says here, tell me ye that the desire by the under the law, do ye not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham and his two sons, the one by bond maid and the other by a free woman, but which was of, or who was of the bond woman was born after the flesh, hence Ishmael. <clears throat> Ishmael, that would have been Ishmael. So hence, those who claim to be Arabs are born after the flesh, since that's the name that they took on, eponymizing it. But that of the free woman was by promise. Hallelujah. Which things are an allegory? There it is. It tells you right there. This shit is the allegory. Y'all don't believe that Abraham, uh, his wife, Hagar, his other wife, Sarai or Sarah, all that shit is metaphysical because Abraham becomes Abram and Abram or Abraham um, wife is called Sarah Swati, Sarai. See, this, this is the trick shit. This is the trick shit. Hagar is Mount Sinai. As it says here. And she was an Egyptian, according to the story. 
and had Ishmael. So if Hagar is a Mount Sinai in Arabia, goddamn, how did a mountain give birth to um, <laughs> Ishmael? You see this dumb shit? Well, these things are two covenants. They're covenants. That's why shit don't make sense. The one from Mount Sinai, which gendereth to bondage, which is Hagar, for this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia and answereth to Jerusalem, which is, which now is, and, and is in bondage to her children. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. Now see, Moors will have to learn how to interpret this shit correctly and stop misleading people. If you claim that you got the most advanced knowledge as Moors, then you better start teaching it then. All right? Because what we do know is that the holy breath, all right, is the real science that you need to be teaching. Allah and man. And who is Allah? Allah is the father of the universe. So if Allah is the father of the universe and Allah is in man, who is the father? That is Pata. And Pata is in every man and every woman. And it's talking about the particular holy glands in the brain. The pineal gland, pituitary gland, hypothalamus gland, and thalamus gland. That is Pata, the father of all. It's in the brain. And it gives you access to communicate or commune with other dimensions, other beings, outside travel called out-of-body experience, astral travel, soul travel. So we know that the holy breath and the higher self, right? That's what we do know is what you should be studying. Instead, you got Negroes still debating on who is the supreme grand sheik. Where's the choice? Ridiculous. I don't give a fuck. You don't come to me with that bullshit. I will smash you. It's not this type of party. Not this type of party. So let's look at it. In a one on one. In the 101s by Prophet Noble Drali. So here it is, right in the Bible, and it's found, it sounds very familiar. It does. Let's look at it. Let's look at it. So, who is Allah? Allah is the father of the universe. All right. That's who Allah is. All of the universe. All right. Let's, let's go a little bit further. What is alt? Alt is a law. Can truth change? Truth cannot change a past way. What other name do we give truth? Holy breath. Mm. What do you have to say about the holy breath? All we can say is, it's great, it is good, it was, it is, and evermore to be. Amen. Mm, 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 mm. See? So, let's, let's keep looking at this. And see, when you debating, you got Negroes debating, debating Hebrew, Moors, and look. What did Allah, why did Allah send Jesus to the earth? 
Now understand what this Jesus is now. Jesus is justice. Jesus symbolizes the breath to save the Israelites from the iron hand oppression of the pale skinned nations of Europe who were governing a portion of Palestine at the time. Mm, 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 mm. Okay. Okay, now let's go a little bit further. What people represents the lower self? Those who were cast out of the holy city and those who accept the teaching. What is the higher self? Oh, the higher self is the mother of virtues and the harmonies of life and breeds justice, mercy, love, and right. Can the higher self pass away? No. Why? Because it is a law in man. Okay. So notice in here, it says that one by the Abraham had two sons, one by the bondmaid and the other by a free woman. The bondmaid for this Hagar, who is the bondmaid, is Mount Sinai in Arabia and answers to Jerusalem. So she's supposed to be answering to Jerusalem, which is now, which now is and is in bondage with her children. But Jerusalem, which is above, so Jerusalem, which if we say is a city, is above Mount Sinai, which is a mountain. Is that what I supposed to interpret here? See, this, see, this shit is allegory. See, you got to understand what is taking place. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. So Jerusalem symbolizes the mother of us all. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Okay. The mother of us all. Well, let's keep looking. Because what is the higher self? The higher self is the mother of the virtues and harmonies of life and breeds justice, mercy, love, and right. So the higher self is the mother. Just like Jerusalem is the mother and is above. You get it? That's talking about your higher self. Sarai, Sarah, a child. Jacob, Israel, symbolizes Jerusalem and being above. Above what? Above the lower self. But there's two selves, remember? How many selves are there? Two. Name them, higher self and lower self. What people represent the higher self? The angels who protect the holy city of Mecca. Hence, Jerusalem, which is above is free, which is the mother of us all. What people represent? The lower self, those who was cast out of the holy city and those who accepted their teachings. Remember, Hagar left. Hagar left because allegedly of the jealousy of Sarai, for Sarah was too old to have children. And then, of course, you get the story that she had children in her 90s. Well, in particular, she had Jacob, Israel, who becomes Israel. See, this is all allegories. Allegories are intentionally chosen as a means for communicating knowledge. Allegory dramatizes cosmic laws, principles, processes, relationships, and functions, and expresses them in a way easy to understand. Once the inner meanings of the allegories has been revealed, they become marvels of simultaneous scientific and philosophical completeness and conciseness. The more they are studied, the richer they become. All right, this is why Prophet Nubadrali told us as Moors not to throw the Bible away. The inner dimensions of the teachings embedded with, um, into each story makes them capable of revealing several layers of knowledge. 
according to the stage of development of the listener. The secrets are revealed as one evolves higher. The higher we get, the more we see. It is always there. The Egyptian, ancient or present day Baladi did and did not believe the allegories as historical facts. So that means the ancient Egyptians did not believe it, which the Gnostics surely comes from. That means that the Ethiopians, who the Egyptians was a colony of, did not believe it, as we see. So the Ethiopians, who are the Abyssinians or Kushites, the, e the Egyptians and the Gnostics did not believe the stories to be historical facts. That is only you believe that. They believed in them in the sense that they believed in the truth behind the stories, as I do. There's truth behind these stories, and I'm breaking them down to you. The Christian seemingly religion throw, throw it away, threw away and lost the very soul of their meaning when it's, when it's mistranslated the ancient Egyptians' allegorical language into alleged history instead of viewing it as a spiritual allegory. The result was a pathetic, a goddamn serious pathetic, blind faith in a kind of, kind of emotional and superstitious supernaturalism and effectively aborted the real power of the story, allegory to transform the life of the individual. Because now you believe that it was only an Albion of the pale skin race that came 2,000 years ago. You must be able to put your sins and burdens upon him. Because you don't want to take responsibility for self. All right? Go check out the website, www.egypt-tahudi.org. So, as we said, Adol Abroth is Yah. Yahweh. Yahuwah. Yahawah. Whatever you want to pronounce it which is one of the major titles of Taudi. God of wisdom is Yah, or Jah, as in Jehovah, meaning the crescent moon. He is called Aya who he. The letters who he turns backwards or I, who, or rather Yahivahe, the sacred name of God. In this form, he symbolized the crescent moon. Yeah. Now, if you need further information, uh, the Black Man Family of the Now um, by Dr. Benyakini, he speaks about this information in that book. Tahuti's often seen image is that of an ibis, crane headed bird, all right? And this ibis was called Habu or Habai. In the ancient Egyptian, Metunetra, Habai is pronounced Hawa. All right? Hawa was corrupted into Hawa, right? Which is Eve name in Hebrew, Yahweh or Hawa which means the mother of all living things, mother of all living. It symbolizes the Kundalini. The name Yahuwah actually is the sound beat made by the heart. The Tetragrammaton letters Yahivahe symbolizes the four amino acids or protein, the building blocks of life, and the four chambers of the heart. Put your fingers, two fingers in your ears, and listen closely. Yahuwah, Yahuwah, Yahuwah. So, we know that the four letters in Hebrew, Yahivahe, symbolizes the form and structure of man. You just simply write them over top of each other. Yod, which is in numerals, geometry, symbolizes fire or Ra. 
Yahe symbolizes water, newt. E is number five, so hence 10 and five becomes 15. Yahiva equals 21, as Wa Ava is six, which symbolizes air. 10, five, six is 21. Then you have Yahivahe equals 26, which is earth, which symbolizes Geb, and he again is five, so hence 10, five, six, five equals 26. And two plus six equals eight. Eight, as in the eight dividing cells of mitosis. Yahivahe equals Yahuwah, which equals man, which is the mind. And or Yahewa, Yahawa, womb man equals universal mind. All right, so we can birth ideas, all right, from the lower, right, from the lower, quote unquote, lower self, as we can birth ideas from the higher self. All four amino acids arranged three at a time as a double stranded helix combined equals 72. Yahivahe, the four amino acids that we talk about is thymine, adenine, cetocine, and guanine. All right. The entire DNA is written using a code of only four letters. Namely, T A C G, thymine, adenine, cetocine, and guanine. First DNA is transcribed into long strands of messenger RNA by using the above four letters in groups of three, and these triplet coding contains the copy code. The sequence of these triple Groups represents a chain specific atom amino acids found in various enzymes and proteins. Okay, and these four is out of 20 amino acids that provides the fundamental building blocks for which all human life is constructed. Okay, right, here it is. It's called Blastopores, dividing cells of mitosis. And these same eight correlates to the eight cells that formed your physical body into existence. This is symbolic to Idolabroth and his seven children. Hence, eight. One plus seven is eight. In ancient Egyptian, Comedic Temerian philosophy is the same thing. At tomb, produce his children, Shu, Newt, and from Shu and Newt, um, excuse me, Shu and Tef Newt came Geb and Newt. And then from Geb and Newt came Osa, Oset, Nebhet, and Sut. So from At tomb came the eight. And it sends Adolabroth, which we refer to as Yahweh, uh, excuse me, Yahshua, because Shu is in the middle between Yahweh, Yahshua, Jehovah, uh, I should say, Yahashua, all right, as you can say. So Jesus can also be seen as Shu, as we said earlier, where Shu can be known as a dollar bro. As Shu was the first begotten son. But these eight dividing cells is what formed the physical body into existence and these same eight cells still reside right now 
at the base of your spine in which that this is where the Kundalini is projected from. Your life is projected from that area. Because a law, arm, leg, leg, arm, head, is the acronym. All right, if you add the phallus, it becomes a lahi. The I and the dot, the, of course, um, the dot symbolizes the sperm, semen. And of course, the line of the eye symbolizes the phallus, and symbolizes man. Woman is a lahu. Well, the U symbolizes the uterus, the womb. Now, together, we become Allahumma, which is the Elohim, the Alpha, Omega, beginning and ending. Or Al-Om, Al-Om, Al-Om is Alim, meaning universe or and all knowing. Remember when Adam had sex with Eve, she conceived, or it says that he knew Eve. Adam knew Eve and she conceived. So sex is a way of knowing each other. That's of course, if you only practice the sacred sciences of what we call Tantra Kriya Yoga. All right, my grandmaster Sonia Saraswati is the person with that recommend you study. So the Gnostic sect honored the snake. They did not view the snake as a seducer who led the first couple into sinful behavior. Rather, they saw it as a liberator who brought knowledge to Adam and Eve by convincing them to eat up the tree of knowledge and good and evil, and thus to become fully human. All right, the serpent symbol, the Ouroboros, the Ouroboros, all right, which is the Uraeus as it becomes. This ancient symbol, all right, Dragon swallows his own tail, forming a circle, meaning um, psycholidity. All right. Unity or infinity. In Gnosticism, this serpent symbolizes eternity and the soul of the world. Soul of the world. See? Now you might begin to start understanding why the individual known as Albert Pike wrote in his Morals and Dogma that Masons worship the serpent, the snake, because that was seen in Gnostic sects, right? Which is the ancient Egyptian sect or teachings from the ancient mystery school system. They did not see the snake in that way. It also symbolized currency, electricity, life, hence even the renewal of life, the resurrection. When the snake shed his skin, it symbolized the resurrection, in that sense, the renewal, the born again. All it is is from looking at the snake. Okay? So in ancient Egypt, they have Tata, which of course becomes Satan. And not in um, Genesis 3, uh, 1, 15, 1 through 15, it says this. And he, serpent, said unto the woman, Yea, have God say, ye shall not eat of every tree in the garden? And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye shall eat thereof, that your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And the woman said, the serpent began, and the Lord God said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field, and upon the belly thou shalt go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Now, as you see here, Sata had legs. That means that God cut his legs off, made them render, uh, you know, to nothing but the dust. So now you see snakes just slither, slithering around on the dust, you know, in the dust, right, on the ground. But you go to the ancient Egyptian story. 
Go to the Book of the Dead. Miss Stoneman, the Book of the Dead by Jay, um, by um, E. A. Wallace Budge. It's actually called the Book of um, of the Mouth Open Ceremony, went for by day and night. The Papyrus of Ani. But this was translated by him, and he says this chapel of making the transformation into the serpent, Sata. So here, the Gnostics gained their knowledge about becoming the snake. Because it's talking about the resurrection of the Kundalini. A man can become immortal like Sata by repeating prayers to identify himself with the Netter, God, the great serpent Sata. God of the earth, man, was immortal because he was regenerated every day in the womb of the sky nature newt. Now, the Bible goes on to tell you that they didn't really have a problem with the serpent either because just like Satan, Jesus was called the son of man. And if you read New Testament, John 3, 14, not John 3, 16, but 314. And as a and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So here go Jesus compare himself to the serpent. Well, he also said, be um gentle um as a dove, you know. And and um basically intelligent as a serpent, wise as a serpent. Right, so be gentle as a dove and wise as a serpent. But here, he's comparing himself to the serpent that was lifted up by Moses in the wilderness. And so he must be lifted up. Hence, the Kundalini, which is the serpentine fire, must be lifted up inside of you. Right, in 1979, Elaine Pagels um, publish a popular book, The Gnostic Gospels, which details the suppression of some of um, the writings from the Nat Hamity um, texts by early bishops of, Christian, of the Christian church. Okay? Even, so Jesus compared himself to, but here we have Osiris, or Saul, also called Ani, who also goes into it? He said, Who words is truth save? I am the serpent Sata, who years are infinity. I lay down dead. I am born daily. I am the serpent Satanta. I Satanta come Satan. The dweller of the utmost part of the earth. The part of the earth is to my inside of your parts. But because your Sata or Satanta, Satan, your Luciferian serpentine fire is at the base of the spine and must be lifted up like Jesus said. Um, Moses lifted up the serpent in the wind, so must Jesus do so also. You must lift up your Jesus. Hence, you must breathe to raise the Kukulini energy. All right? I am born. I become new. I renew my youth every day. No. Satan, the dweller of the utmost part of the earth, they derive the concept of Satan dwelling in hell, Christianity, but is located in the inner parts of the earth, meaning your physical body. So the original priesthood of the serpent nature set as in Satan. In ancient Kemetic, Sumerian Egypt, survived for 25 recorded dynasties, right? 3,200 3, um, BC to 700 BCE. The serpent was often a symbol of God's alter ego, the black sun, which symbolized the spirit of night and or, or of death. He combined with the solar disc as the um, guy during his dark hours, right? In other words, at tomb. All right, set. The pattern was the same as in, same in Osaru, Osiris, set, 
Inky and Lil, Bell, Yam, Apollo, Python, Kane, or Abel, Kane. The dark god was the light god av adversary, not because he was originally viewed as evil, but because he represented a sleeping or quiescent phase of the same god. Set, Sata, or Sirius B was originally a Hedic Egyptian stellar nature deity, right? The psycholo kind of parts of the solar of Heru, which is Horus, symbolizes Sirius A, also his mom, um, all set, symbolizes Sirius A, hence the Black Madonna and Child, hence the Eastern Star, all of that good stuff, which corresponds to the Greek Apollo underground serpent form path pathon. Even the so-called Jews named um, Apollon, the spirit of the pig. Apollon is mentioned in New Testament, Revelation 9-11, mm, They had a king over them, the angel of the abyss. His name in Hebrew is Abaddon, the destroyer. And in Greek, he was had the name Apollon, right? Satan being the coherent um, snake, phallus penis, living in a Ionic offices, vaginal canal, and or sets um, Isis temple, female body, and giving oracle life. But later, the cult of Osar, Osiris, and Oset, Isis, we guess, set as an evil principle, as a technically in the comedic Egyptian philosophy, the god Set, Seta or Seth, the biblical character that replaced his brother Abram, Seth was originally good, stands for the um, force of chaos and destruction or evil misplaced. He was the manifestation of Apep or Typhon, Tech, all right, opposers of the principles of light. Right? This is Mary Hopes in practical Egyptian magic. All right, so I'm going to end that right there for the night. All right, so this is the Gnostics teachings. You have to understand what is really taking place. You know, a lot of y'all read, you know, or listen to, you know, information concerning concerning this, you know, Gnostics teachings, and yet don't fully understand what's, you know, what is, you know, the origin of it. And how it comes from out of Ethiopia, from the Kushites, hence Egyptians, who still have the writings on the wall to verify um, the, that those principles. All right, so we want to make sure that you understand that as you can continue studying, you have these keys, the keys, the keys on to put together. All right, continuing now for days, weeks, months, and years to come. We're moving towards our most cherished goals of health, wealth, knowledge of ourself. All right, all good things, protection, security, better economic condition, and full contentment. Every action, enterprise, and endeavor which we wish to be involved is bringing increasing rewards. We have so much joy, happiness, success, and abundance in our life that we're able to help share with those who are sincere along the way. We're moving closer toward the oneness of God and God is in the full release of our higher inner selves. Shay, we out, y'all. Peace.